All right, everyone. So uh, I've been seeing some comments about having some sort of uh, tutorial videos for um, sewing your own kits down, your jerseys. Um, and I kind of thought maybe a good spot to start would just be covering a couple of tools and stuff that I use a lot. Um, I'm sure a lot of this is maybe common knowledge, but uh, a couple of things that I've picked up along the way, somebody has passed on to me or whatever, um, that I thought would be helpful to share. Um, First things first, uh, I've been seeing uh, even in the last couple of days questions about, you know, getting a good sewing machine. Quite honestly, I mean, this is this is what I got. I picked this up from Walmart a couple of years ago. Um, it was just the cheapest model that happened to be there, and it served me well for it's probably been five plus years at this point. Um, honestly, we're not, you know, doing heavy duty sewing at this at this point. You're just, you know, sewing through a couple of of at the maximum, maybe three layers of, of fabric if you include multiple layers of the um, the fabric for the numbers and such, plus the jersey. Um, unless you're a crazy person that's sewing through every single layer of, uh, of the number to get through to the jersey, which you shouldn't be doing anyway. Um, the only thing I would suggest is getting um, denim needles, which I don't know if I have a packet here right now to show, but they are, you can kind of see on the point there, um, sort of right here, uh, they come with a purple dye on them. Um, for color coding purposes so that they're easier to figure out what, what type you're using. I use those, the denim needles are good just because you're going through a couple of layers of the twill, um, especially whenever you're doubling up, maybe sometimes tripling up. Um, getting through the jersey fabric's no big deal, but it's just those layers of twill that might be a little bit heavier to get through. Um, but as far as the machine itself, maybe don't get the most inexpensive machine, but as long as it's a name brand from somewhere like Walmart or wherever, um, I, I think I maybe spent a hundred bucks on this tops. Um, beyond the machine itself, just some everyday tools. Obviously, I think a lot of you guys are already familiar with the seam rippers, just in case you're stripping your jerseys on your own. Um, a couple of other things, obviously a really good pair of uh, fabrics, uh, scissors. Don't cheap out on these and don't use these for anything else. Um, cause if you use them outside of fabric, they're really going to destroy them. And honestly, these things are super ash sharp whenever you buy them. Um, once they become dull, they're just not worth using for fabric of any kind anymore. Um, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice if you don't have one of these, um, like flexible fabric, uh, measuring tapes. Um, I think they're more used for like tailors to like actually measure your dimensions and stuff whenever they're fitting you for a piece of clothing, but um, they're super helpful, uh, I find, for measuring out whenever you're making placements for the numbers and such, um, whenever you're trying to actually customize a jersey. Um, as far as uh, this big, you can see this, um, I actually bought this in a set, these three items right here, uh, I think from Michaels or Amazon. Um, it's a self-healing um, cutting board, which I just always leave. It's, it's not really, it's, it's solid, but it's not super thick. Um, it's kind of like a heavy duty mouse pad almost. Um, you can use that along with this rotor, rotary cutter to, I, I frequently use this to cut out new, um, nameplate fabric. Uh, and then obviously, um, the nice thing about the cutting board is it's got measurements already on it. And then it comes with this additional see-through, uh, really large ruler. Um, so when you combine all those three tools together, it's really great for cutting nameplates. Um, so those three things come in a set. Um, I have seen a bunch of comments lately about people wondering about using uh, heat presses, which, hey, more power to if you want to spend the money on it, that's great. I personally prefer not to. Um, not that I plan on stripping any of my jerseys in the future, but it is a nice bonus for, you know, down the road. Um, we all have our horror stories potentially where you've gotten a jersey you bought on eBay, you're trying to strip it, do something else with it, and A, stripping off the numbers are, are a, a, a major feat, and B, once you get down to the jersey itself, it could leave behind a lot of glue residue, whatever. Um, instead of using a heat press, what I actually like to do, because it's a bit more forgiving, uh, it is a little bit more challenging whenever you're getting to the, the actual 
sewing portion of it once you get the numbers onto the jersey. Um, but as long as you have patience, it's, it's fine, it's easy to use. I actually much prefer this um, uh, temporary adhesive spray. Um, all I do is I flip it up and upside down, get, get a, a box for overspray, throw the number right inside, upside down, spray the bottom with this, uh, it's the Odif brand. Uh, it's 505 temporary adhesive. It's used more for like, uh, you can see kind of on the back here, um, for quilting, for uh, putting small designs for a quilt in place. Um, the nice thing is, is that it doesn't stain. Um, it's a temporary adhesive, so I mean, you spray this, you put it down on a jersey, you can infinitely reposition, maybe not infinitely, but you can put reposition numbers quite a few times and it will still hold on to the jersey material itself and um, be ready for once you actually get it on to, to go to sew onto the jersey. Uh, I try to spray them, you know, no longer than a day beforehand. Sometimes um, I might leave stuff like a jersey sit out with a, with a number or a patch put on place and then you know overnight leave a, a stack of books on top potentially not always it's pretty rare occurrence but um sometimes i'll leave a, a heavy weight like a couple of books st stack on top overnight just to make sure that it's it's good in place everything's flat um but this stuff is great like i said you can reposition these numbers uh, multiple times it doesn't leave a stain and the nice part is since we're not heat pressing any of the the twill down to the jersey there's not going to be any stain from actually the the like heat transfer from uh sealing the jersey the the number on the jersey itself so for future for future use if somebody's ever going to strip a jersey it's going to be super easy all you're going to do is use a, the thread ripper to get through um zigzag stitch around the edge of the, the number and there should be very little if any residue left beneath the number itself so um, this is fantastic um, the reason I say try not to, to spray and mount them more than a day in advance is just because after I've noticed after sitting there for a while it does start to loosen up a little bit and the strong of the spray isn't as strong uh, the hold of the spray isn't as strong sorry um, but as long as you're doing it within a day uh, sometimes I'm literally uh, sewing them down within minutes of, of mounting them um, Again, a nice, a uh, couple of extra added benefits beyond being able to reposition. It doesn't stain the jersey. It doesn't gum up. It says here somewhere it doesn't actually gum up your needle anywhere. It's actually made for fabric. Um, it's it's a really great product. It's a little bit expensive. I just got this jar in, or this bottle, spray bottle in today. Um, I think it was $20 for this uh, 12 ounce bottle. Um, but it's actually cheaper than the six ounce bottle that they had, which was like 15 bucks. Um, but this is actually made for quilting. So this is made for doing what we're doing here. Um, and it is, like I said, very forgiving. Um, I, I much prefer this rather than going down the route of getting a, a, a heat press and trying to figure out that whole jazz, but more power to it if you don't want to do it that way. Um, but anyway, just make sure that you get a cardboard box. I've used the same one for a couple of years now. Um, just like I said, you'll get a lot of overspray and you can see just how much <laughs> of that spray I've actually used in this box here. Um, but have a box for that. Don't be spraying this anywhere else. Uh, but the final benefit of this is it does wash out. Um, if you think about how many times people are quilting, they're making quilts for their little babies. They don't want stuff that's going to be harmful to the baby. So uh, if the jersey would ever be washed, whatever residue or whatever glue itself was actually on the back of that, that number that's being affixed to the jersey uh, with a wash, it'll actually come out. So you're not going to get any kind of like crusty anything left on the jersey. You're not going to have like a hard... Uh, hard crest or hard feel underneath the number um, on the back of the jersey either. It's it's a really good product. So I know I've spent a lot of time talking about it. You'd think I got a lot of money for uh, advertising this. I wish I did, but um, definitely definitely high quality product. Give it a try. Um, <clears throat> the only other tool, and this might sound kind of goofy, but if you're ever making measurements, uh, if you've ever been to a tailor, um, one little trick that they have is actually using a little piece of soap. And that's all that this is, just an old piece of soap. Um, you can use this to make a mark on your jersey if you're kind of marking stuff out, getting stuff all, all marked out, ready to, to sew stuff down. Um, because obviously, like, you don't want to have both of your back numbers, you know, if you, especially if you're using temporary spray. If you're using a heat press, that's fine. But uh, if you have double numbers here, you don't want them both uh, with the temporary spray to be on the jersey uh, sprayed loose at the same time. Um, what I do is I... I space them out, put them on the jersey, 
uh, sew the one down um, after I had sprayed and mounted it on the jersey. Once that one's sewn, then I attach the next one, but if you wanted to make some sort of measurements, uh, once you have these both in place and you're going to remove this one to sew down the first one, let's say, get these in place, you can use a piece of soap onto the fabric, mark out exactly where you want these corners of this number to be. Now you know exactly where to reposition it again later. Um, and because it's so, uh, all you got to do is just give it a nice light hand wash and then the soap mark will come right out of the jersey. So, um, recommend that. Um, the only other thing you might want in addition to the sewing machine are uh, if you're anything like the penguins, they've got multiple colors of kits, of numbers, of jerseys, and so over the couple of years that I've been doing this, these are the different colors that I've been, at least just for the penguins, using. Um, and to make it easier to swap stuff out as you're working, um, obviously you're going to have different thread colors, but at the same time you're going to want to, these are called bobbins, um, this is the, well, I'll get to that in the next video, uh, these are the little um, reels that kind of feed thread up from the underneath of the machine and that's depending on your machine how you get there it might be different but this is where the bobbin sits uh the bobbin reel itself sits inside of this little gadget and then this gets fed inside of the machine um, to make it quick to swap in and out uh, of different thread colors um, I would suggest it probably can't be that expensive. I had a bunch of extras from my mom's old sewing kit. Uh, I just have a different bobbin reel set sat here for every every single different uh, thread color. That way it's easy to swap thread in and out as I need to. Because um, again, if you're anything like the penguins, you're going to have a bunch of different colors. And then that way you're not going to be wasting a lot of thread if you thread up uh, an entire thing of white here. And then now if you only have one bobbin, uh, if you have multiple different colors, if you're working on multiple different kits at the same time, you're going to have a lot of waste because then you're going to now, if you don't have the extras, you're going to be unwra unwinding all that thread and throwing it away because um, there's no way that you're going to be able to thread that back up again correctly without uh, starting over. Because um, winding those winding those bobbins is all done. Again, I can do that in the next video. This will be done through the machine up here somewhere. And that process is probably going to be different from machine to machine, but generally it's going to be the same but you can't do that by hand it's just not going to work well so um as far as tools that's all i can really think of uh, like i said i think in the next video i'll get through really quick just how to thread up the machine really quick um maybe show a quick new bobbin at least setting up the bobbin so that you can re-thread it um, and then i'll talk through a couple of the uh, settings that i have here that i use for um uh, and again, th those settings might be different from machine to machine, but generally the settings that I use for large numbers and then smaller numbers and letters once you're actually like slowing down, uh, let's say, the, the last name to a, a kit, uh, to a nameplate. So, um, see you in the next video. Hey, so a couple of extra tools here that I found or items that I thought would be important to capture, which I, of course, didn't have during the first video, um, are uh, just some things, like I said, I wanted to cover because I thought, you know, they're, they're common knowledge items. Some uh, at this point, some of them are not. Um, but since we're covering all the bases here, uh, I thought it would at least start here are the different needles that I had mentioned. Um, this is your general, like, all-purpose pack that you could get at, you know, Michael's or wherever. And the, th these are the three different types that they come with, with like their basic universal ballpoint needle pens or ballpoint needle. Um, the colors here on the left are for lighter weight stuff. And as you get over to the right, the, the right are the denim needles that I mentioned before, the purple color. Um, after I made it through my first pack of those, then I swapped over to just getting straight up denim needles, period. Um, so the nice thing is, is these are all, they fit all brands of sewing machines. Um, they're made by Singer, but you can use them with any other, um, with any other machine. Uh, and then what you're looking for are the, the 100 by 16 size. So like I said, they're just heavier weight. They're made for denim, they're made for blue jeans. So if they're good enough for that heavyweight material, it just kind of made sense to me that they would be good for, uh, jerseys and, you know, all of the, uh, the materials that we're working with here um, with the twill and such especially the multi layers so there you have your needles that we uh, tried to cover in the first video um, also a couple of other things uh, I am not Chris but uh, the dude I, I know a lot of you are well aware of this book 
this is a great source of, of uh, Jersey history. Um, it's got a lot of information in it. If you don't have the book already, definitely go out and get it. Uh, Chris is a great guy. He's got a great piece of, uh, of Jersey history here from this first book is from 83 to 93. That's a majority of what I collect. So it's, it's a huge resource for me. And even if I don't collect anything but Penguins jerseys, it's got everything from across the entire league. So it's a really great piece of, of, of uh, history here. Um, all encompassed with inside of it. Um, I know he tried to be as accurate as he could with everything, um, and he spent a lot of time and, and effort bringing that book together. So um, go get yourself one of those if you don't have one already. Uh, it's also a great, really cool um, coffee table item just to have out. I know I've had a lot of people come to my house and take a look through it, and thought it was really neat. So um, the other thing that I have here, and that I've shared this a little bit in the past, is this instruction sheet from uh, Stahl which I've stumbled on, on in the past. Um, basically, this is in very short bullet point um, format, exactly everything that we're going to cover in any of these videos. They give you word for word exactly what you wanted to do. Uh, I'll share a link to this. And um, as you can see, this is well worn. I've literally had this on my little workstation here for the last couple of years, and I just made notes for myself so that I can easily remember exactly what uh, settings for the machine I want for every type of, of job I'm working on. Um, but they do a very good job here of covering exactly everything you need to follow. Um, so if you've made it your way through these videos, you can come back to this sheet and just keep this on your desk to actually remind you as you're working your way through any jerseys in the future. Um, it covers everything from um, just right here, which we'll cover a little bit later, uh, how the threads should look whenever they're threading through the fabric, to what to do when you get to outside corners versus inside corners, um, if you're doing two or three color layers, etc., etc. So this is a really good uh, resource. Uh, like I said, I'll give you a link to that. Um, the only other thing that I would suggest is for anybody that's stripping their own jerseys is, see this bag here I got of every little number and letter that I've stripped off of old jerseys in the past. I would suggest keeping those, not necessarily because you want to reuse them, but for examples like this where I'm about to, it's been quite a while since I put a kit on a jersey, so I want to make sure that the settings that I have in the machine still look good. Um, the machine itself is still in proper working order, so I went through on this one little edge just to make sure that it all lined up with what I wanted. Look at the white thread there, and that's what I wanted to go after for putting down this next kit. Everything looks good, so I'm good to go. Um, but yeah, I highly rec recommend keeping all this old stuff just because you never know when you could use it. And the benefit is uh, if you even have somebody else that you're close with that's not too far away or you want to send them a, a package, anybody that's starting out, they'll have stuff here that uh, literally what I did before I put anything on an actual jersey was I took some old numbers, threw them on a t-shirt, and just started teaching myself uh, sewing that way because it was an old t-shirt I didn't care about. So um, it was a great first start. So um, if I think of anything else, I'll have one more video, but I think those are literally all the tools that I use. Uh, maybe the only other item that I would add is if I can find a link to this workstation that I have here. Um, it's a nice little desk. Uh, just as long as you get yourself a good spot where you can sit um, to be able to do this, because quite honestly, if you're uh, anything like me, you're going to be a perfectionist. It's going to take you a while to get this stuff on to sewn down onto a jersey. And uh, just having a nice little workstation like this with a you know little organization station for everything um, is going to be key. So try to find links to some of the stuff that I've mentioned and uh, post that up somewhere.